Okay, so here we go. Today is May 21st. Okay. We are starting section 11.4. There are two parts. There's these angle arc relationships. We're going to do that today. And the power theorems we do tomorrow. Okay. We know about central angles already. Central angles have their vertex at the center. Vertex at the center of the circle. And we know that the measure of the angle is exactly equal to the measure of the arc. The measure of this central angle, and here's what I want you to use the color put a color in the middle here, the measure of that angle is equal to the measure of its arc. Inscribed angles we talked about yesterday, those are angles whose vertex are on the circle. Vertex is on the circle. And we know from yesterday that the measure of the angle is equal to one-half the measure of the arc. Angle here, there's an inscribed angle right there. And down in here where the vertex is on the circle and we have a tangent line, this is the angle here. And that angle is half of its arc. And the arc we're talking about is the arc that is created by the sides of the angle. So the angle is half of its arc. Okay, An interior angle that's not a central angle has its vertex inside of the circle but not at the center. Vertex inside the circle, but not at the center. Okay, we're talking about maybe this angle right here. Okay, and the way you find the measure of that angle, measure of the angle is one half of its arc plus the arc of the vertical angle. <coughs> here's this angle that I've marked. Its arc, when we follow the sides of that angle out to the circle, here is its arc right there. Then the arc of the vertical angle. Here's the vertical <laughs> angle. So when we follow the sides of that arc out, and that one. So that's arc plus the arc of the vertical angle. Exterior, Sammy? What the, what the angles in the middle of the congruent? This, you mean this angle congruent to this one? Yeah. Yes, they are congruent. But <laughs> notice their arcs. Sammy asked if this angle right here, the one that I've marked, is congruent to this one over here. And I said, yes, they're vertical angles. But notice that they have different size arcs. Okay, the angles are congruent, but their arcs are not. Okay, Exter interior angles had the vertex inside the circle. Guess where an exterior angle is? It's outside of the circle. So an exterior angle has a vertex outside of the circle. There are three pictures for possibilities for exterior angles. This one right here is formed by two secant lines. Secant, secant. This exterior angle down here is formed by a secant line 
Remember, a secant is the extension of a chord. And what's this line down here that just touches the circle? Tangent. So that's one possibility. And then another one down here is this one, where it's an exterior angle formed by two tangents. So this one. All three of these, the measure of that angle is one half of the big arc minus the little arc. One half of the big arc minus the little arc. Okay, let's go back and let's talk about what's the big arc and what's the little arc. Take the sides of your angle and you're going to follow them down until they hit the circle. The first arc that's created, that's the little arc. Keep going on the sides of your angle until it hits the circle a second time. There's the big arc. There's your big arc and your little arc. On this one, where this, take the sides out where the, the two sides of the angle first intersect the circle. Here's your little arc. Now this tangent line doesn't intersect the circle again, so we kind of stop there with that one, but we, this secant will intersect the circle again, so we're going to take it all the way out there. And then your big arc is this one. And your little arc and your big arc do touch each other right here. Again, following this one, exterior angle, follow the sides up till it intersects the circle. That first intersection point defines the little arc. And there will be no other intersection points, so the parts that's left is all the way around here. Okay, in this one down here, what do you notice about the measure of the little arc and the measure of the big arc? Sarah, they add up to be 360, absolutely. The big arc plus the little arc adds up to be 360. Okay, there is a special case for this one only. And we call this the ice cream cone situation. Doesn't this look like an ice cream cone? ice cream cone or an exterior angle formed by two tangents. And what happens in this case only, and it just makes life so much easier if you remember this little idea, the measure of the angle plus the measure of the little arc always add up to 180 degrees. The measure of the angle plus the measure of the little arc add up to 180 degrees. It's nice, but you have to remember that it only works for this one. It doesn't work for the other two. Okay? Everybody caught up? All right, let's go ahead and do some um, problems here. Okay, here we go. The measure of arc DI is 80 degrees. The measure of arc TE is 20. I want to find the measure of angle 1. 
Okay, put this information in. DI is 80. Arc TE is 20. And I want you to find the measure of angle 1. Angle 1's right here, and the first thing you need to do is you need to decide what kind of angle is it. Is this a central angle? Here's your choices. Central, inscribed, interior, exterior. Interior, this is an interior angle, which means the measure of that angle is half of its arc plus the arc of the vertical angle. Okay, angle one, follow the sides out. Its arc, 80 degrees plus the arc of the vertical angle. Find the vertical angle for angle one, it's right here. Follow those sides out and we get 20. In your head, 80 plus 20, 100 times a half, 50, sure, 50. So the measure of angle one is 50 degrees. That's it. Okay. All right, look at this one. Arc WA is congruent to arc RE. We can start marking this as we read through this given. Arc WA is congruent to arc RE, so mark it. WA congruent to arc RE. The measure of arc WA is 100. Right now, what does that tell you about arc RE? It's also a hundred, uh huh? The measure of arc WR is a hundred and thirty. And I want you to find angle T. Okay, first thing that you need to do is you need to figure out what kind of angle is angle E. Brendan, what kind of angle is angle E? an exterior angle. That means the measure of the angle is half of the big arc minus the little arc. For angle T, follow the sides out. What's the big arc? What's the big arc for angle T? WR, which is how much? 130, so the big arc is 130, minus the little arc, uh oh, the little arc is this little bit in here, AE, do we know that right now? Nope, but can we figure it out? Tara? Absolutely, add up the other arcs and subtract from 360, so 100 plus 130, everybody? Everybody. 230, everybody, plus another 100, 330, now do 360 minus that 330, 30, so arc AE right here is 30, little arc is 30, and now we can just subtract inside of here, what's 130 minus 30? 100, so half of 100, 50, there's the measure of angle. Okie doke. Look at this next one. Number three here. The measure of angle RTE is 150 degrees. RTE is 150 degrees. The measure of arc RE is 130. I want you to find the measure of arc MH. This is what I want you to find. I need a variable here. Let's call that X. Okay, look at the angle that you were given. 150. What kind of angle is it? Here's your choices. Central, inscribed, interior, or exterior. 
It's an interior angle. Which tells us the measure of an angle is half of its arc plus the arc of the vertical angle. Half. Okay. From that, from the that angle, the 150, what's its arc? What is that? How big is that arc? Everybody? How big is this arc? 130. 130. Plus the arc of the vertical angle. So this 150, its vertical angle is right here. Follow those sides out. How big is this arc up here? Arc MH. X, we don't know. Oh, but we do know the measure of this angle is, I told you the angle is the 150. Everybody okay? Yeah? Okay, don't distribute that half through. Do not distribute the half through. Multiply both of your equations by half. Or, no. Multiply both sides of the equation by 2. Times by 2 on the left, times by 2 on the right. On the left-hand side, what's 2 times 150? 300. On the right-hand side, when you multiply by 2, this 2 takes out that half. And that leaves us with 130 plus x. 2 does not go into the parentheses. Then we can just subtract that and we're going to get 170 degrees. So we know, so that's what we wanted, the arc, or the measure of arc MH is 170 degrees. We okay? All right, look at this one. Um, the measure of angle O, excuse me, arc OSN is 220. Starting at O, going through S, and stopping at N. This arc down here, arc OSN, is 220 degrees. Which means, what's this arc in here, ON? What's arc ON? 360 minus 220 is 140. Uh huh. What kind of angle is angle C? Exterior. And we know that the measure of an exterior angle is one half, the big arc, minus the little arc. Big arc, 220, minus the little arc, 140, and 220 minus 140, it's 80, half of 80, 40. There's the measure of angle C. Wait, don't turn the page. There's an easier way to do this problem. This way works fine, but there's a much easier way to do this problem. Isn't this an ice cream cone just turned upside down? Ice cream cone situation turned upside down. That's an ice cream cone. And we know in an ice cream cone that the exterior angle plus the little arc equals 180. So if you find that this little arc is 140, then could you get angle C directly? Oh, yeah. It's 40. I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, what? You put one C on Oh, I did. Thank you. I also forgot the C here. And it should be angle C. Right. If you see it, if you see this ice cream cone, do it this way. Much faster. 
If you don't see that it's an ice cream cone situation or you don't like that way, then it works with the regular formula. Brendan? Yes. Everybody good? Okay. Look at this one. The measure of angle R is 52. We're going to start filling this information in. R is 52. There's the angle. The measure of arc IL is 23. And I want you to find the measure of arc CE. That's what we're looking for here. What kind of angle is angle R? That's the angle we have to deal with. What kind of angle is that? Carol? Exterior, uh-huh. That's an exterior angle. And we know the formula for an exterior angle. Do I have it memorized yet for an exterior? Jake? Uh, one times six, Yes. Okay, let's plug in the information we know. Here's the little arc sitting right there where that angle first intersected. We do know the angle this time, 52, is half big arc. Any ideas what you want to say for that big arc? X. X, sure. If you put an X there, put an X up in the diagram too, so that you make sure you know what that stands for. X minus, and the little arc? 23. Okay, you guys go ahead, solve this one on your own. Raise your hand when you have an answer. Solve it on your own, raise your hand when you have an answer. Um, we saw a lot of common errors here, and I want to make sure we clean this up because it's a pretty major error to be making on something so simple. we got to clear this fraction. So times by 2, times by 2, 104 equals the 2 and the half cancel, and we got x minus 23. Had a lot of people get to here, and then they got 81 as an answer because we subtracted 23 instead of adding. To get rid of this minus 23, you have to add 23 to both sides. So you should get 127. X is 127 degrees. Go back and answer the question. I did not ask you to solve for X. I asked you to find the measure of arc CE. That is 127. OK. 
okay? All right, last one here for today. Let's look at this. I want you to solve for x and for y. Okay, what kind of angle is this angle down here? This one right here, this angle y. Here's your choices. Central, inscribed, interior, exterior. Angle Y is not exterior. It is inscribed. Its vertex is on the circle, which it means its measure is half of its arc. Do you know how big this arc is right here? Because you've already solved the problem, right? But the rest of us don't know what this arc is right here. Could we figure it out? Eventually, once we know what this arc over here is, what this x is, but right now I can't do anything with that inscribed angle. We have to start with the exterior angle is half of the big arc minus little arc and in this 60 degree angle out here, that exterior angle 60 is half of its big arc Follow the sides of that angle out until it intersects the circle twice. And the big arc here is 155. Minus the little arc. Little arc is this bit in here, x. Okay, let's multiply by 2 to clear the fractions. If we multiply by 2, we're going to get 120. And the two and the half cancel out. 155 minus x. Brendan? This does not equal 275. Well, but this is a positive 155x, right? So we're going to have to minus 155 from both sides. Are you with me? Did you have the 155 minus x, or did you have x minus 155? What with the 155? Yeah, it does, and it goes with the thing after it. Does that make sense? Mike? If you want to add an x over here, sure, and then minus the 120, whatever makes you happiest. X is 35. Once x is 35, now can you figure out what this leftover arc is down here? Sure. 155 and 35 is 190. 360 minus 190. I'm going to help you out here. It's 170. Now you can tell me what, ang what Y is. Inscribed angle, vertex on the circle. So half of its arc. Oops, thank you. Again, angle Y, inscribed angle. The vertex is on the circle, so half of its arc, half of 170, 85. Are we good to go? All right, your homework for tomorrow is 11.4 day one. 11.4 day one is your homework for tomorrow. 11.4 day one.